The next sutta is 6.5.45. The Buddha said, Monks, is poverty a woeful thing for an immoral, worldly person? Surely, Lord, a monk replied. Nah. And, when a monk, uh, and when a man is poor, needy, in straits, he gets into debt, is that woeful too? Surely, Lord. And when he gets into debt, he borrows. Is that woeful too? Surely, Lord. And when the bill falls due, he pays not, and they press him. Is that woeful too? Surely, Lord. And when pressed, he pays not, and they beset him. Is that woeful too? Surely, Lord. And when beset, he pays not, and they bind him, tie him up. Is that woeful too? Surely, Lord. Thus monks, poverty, debt, borrowing, being pressed, beset, and bound are all woes for an immoral, worldly person. Monks, it is just the same for anyone who has no faith in wholesome states or skillful states, eh? is not conscientious about wholesome states, has no fear or blame about wholesome states, no energy for wholesome states, no insight into wholesome set states. He is said to be poor, needy, in straits, in the Aryan discipline. Now that very man, poor, needy, in straits, wanting in faith, conscientiousness, fear of blame, energy and insight concerning wholesome states, works evilly in deed, word and thought. I call that his getting into debt, and to cloak his evil deeds, he lays hold upon false hope. Let none know this of me, he hopes. Let none know this of me, he resolves. Let none know this of me, he says. Let none know this of me, he strives in act. So likewise, cloak his evil words, his evil thoughts. I call that his borrowing. Then his pious fellows in the holy life say thus, This venerable sir acts in this sort, carries on in this way. I call that his being pressed. Then gone to forest, tree root or lonely place, evil and wholesome thoughts and attendant remorse pursue him. I call that his being beset. And that man, monks, poor, needy, in straits, having worked evilly in deed, word and thought, on the breaking up of the body after death, is bound in hell's bonds or the bonds of some animal's womb. And I see no other single bondage, monks, so harsh, so bitter, such a bar to winning the unsurpassed peace from effort. I mean hell's bonds or the bonds of an animal's womb. That's the end of the sutta. So the Buddha is saying, uh, just as a poor man, uh, because he is poor, he gets into debt, and then he is being chased by the debtors eh, for payment, and he cannot pay them, and they tie him up, eh, and then he is in a very sorrowful condition. So in the same way, the Buddha said, if a person does not know about wholesome states, eh, cannot differentiate eh, between wholesome and unwholesome states, eh, that means he does not understand the law of karma, lah, then... Eh, he is also like that poor man, uh, and uh, he tries to hide his evil actions, uh, and then other people criticize him, uh, then he's being pressed, uh, being beset, uh, and uh, and even uh, his thoughts, uh, unwholesome thoughts, uh, and re thoughts of remorse uh, pursue him, uh, and that person after death uh, is born into the woeful plains, uh, now the two woeful planes are three. The uh, hell, hell is the worst. La. The second is uh, the animal realm, and the third is the ghost realm. But here the Buddha says, uh, "I see no other single bondage, monks, so harsh, so bitter, such a bar to winning the unsurpassed peace from effort as hell's bonds or the bonds of an animal's womb." Here the Buddha is, is saying uh, that when a person falls into hell or into the animal realm, uh, that person stays there for a very long time, a very long time. And because that person has no chance of uh, creating good merit, uh, it's very difficult to get out from that uh, two states, uh, hell uh, and the animal womb. Uh, and that person stays there for a very long time until the karma 
most of that evil karma is worked out. Nah. Then only that person comes up. Nah. Nah. Now we come to Sutta number 7.7.68. It's quite an important Sutta. Once the exalted one was on an arms round among the Kosalis with a great following of monks, and on reaching the high road, the exalted one saw in a certain spot a great fiery mass burning, blazing, flaming, at the sight, he stepped down off the road and sat down at the foot of a tree on a seat which was ready. So seated, he addressed the monks thus, See you, monks, that great burning, blazing, flaming, fiery mass. Yes, Lord. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that one should sit or lie beside that great burning, blazing, flaming, firing mass? caressing it, or that one should sit or lie beside some maid whose hands and feet are soft and fair, of noble birth, or Brahmin birth, or yeoman birth, caressing her. And one of the monks said, Surely, Lord, it were better to sit or lie and caress some maid of noble Brahmin or yeoman birth, whose hands and feet are soft and fair. Ill indeed, Lord, were it to sit or lie and caress that great burning, blazing, flaming, fiery mass. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean and of suspicious conduct, full of secret actions, no recluse, though vowed thereto, unchaste, though vowed to chastity, rotten to the core, lustful and vile, to sit or lie and caress that great burning, blazing, flaming, fiery mass. And why? On account of this monks, he may suffer death or ill amounting to death. But not for that reason, on the breaking up of the body after death, would he arise in the untoward way, the ill way, the abyss hell. But when a wicked man of evil nature, unclean and of suspicious nature, etc., lustful and vile, sits or lies caressing some maid of noble Brahmin or yeoman birth, whose feet and hands are soft and fair, he does so to his harm and ill for many a day. For on the breaking up of the body after death, he is reborn in the untoward way, the ill way, the abyss in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man with stout horse hair rope should bind and crush both one's legs so that the rope cut the skin, then the underskin, then the flesh, then the tendons, then the bones, and stay touching the marrow, or that one should enjoy the salutations of noble, of wealthy nobles, wealthy Brahmins, wealthy yeomen. Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the salutations of the wealthy. Ill indeed were it, Lord, that a strong man should bind and crush one's legs to the marrow. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean and of suspicious conduct, full of secret actions, no recluse, though vowed thereto, unchaste, though vowed to chastity, rotten to the core, lustful and vile, that a strong man should bind and crush both his legs with rope, so that it cut the skin, the underskin, the flesh, the tendons, the bones, and stay touching the marrow. And why? On account of this monks, he may suffer death or ill amounting to death, but not for that reason, on the breaking up of the body, would he be reborn in hell. But when a wicked man 
enjoys the salutations of wealthy nobles, wealthy brahmins, wealthy yeomen. He does so to his harm and ill for many a day, for on the breaking up of the body after death, he is reborn in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man with sharpened sword, clean in oil, should smite one on the rum, or that one should enjoy the obeisance of the wealthy? Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the obeisance of the wealthy. Ill indeed were it to be smitten on the rum. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean, and of suspicious conduct, etc., that a strong man should with sharpened sword, cleaned in oil, smite him on the rum. And why? On account of this he may suffer death or ill, amounting to death. But not for that reason would he be reborn in hell. But when a wicked man enjoys the obeisance of the wealthy, he does so to his harm and ill for many a day. For after death he is reborn in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man should wrap one's body around with red-hot iron plates, luminous, glowing, glowing and fiery, <clears throat> or that one should enjoy the rope, a gift of faith of the wealthy? Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the rope, a gift of faith of the wealthy, ill indeed were it to be wrapped in red-hot iron plates. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean, etc., that a strong man should wrap his body around with red-hot iron plates, luminous, glowing, and fiery. And why? On account of this he may suffer death, or ill amounting to death, but not for that reason would he be reborn in hell. But when a wicked man enjoys the robe, a gift of faith of the wealthy, he does so to his harm and ill for many a day, for after death he is reborn in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man with the red-hot iron spike, luminous, glowing and fiery, should open one's mouth and should thrust therein a red-hot copper ball, luminous, glowing and fiery, so that it burned the lips, burned the tongue, burn the throat, burn the belly, and take along with it the intestines and the bowels, and pass out through the anus, or that one should enjoy the arms, a gift of faith of the wealthy. Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the arms, a gift of faith of the wealthy, ill indeed were it to have a red-hot copper ball thrust into one's mouth. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean, etc., that a strong man should open his mouth with a red-hot spike and should thrust therein a red-hot copper ball, which would burn his lips, burn the tongue, burn the throat, burn the belly, and take along with it the intestines and the bowels and pass out through the anus. And why? On account of this he may suffer death or ill amounting to death. But not for that reason would he be reborn in hell. But when a wicked man enjoys the arms, a gift of faith of the wealthy, he does so to his harm and ill for many a day. For after death he is reborn in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man should seize one by the head or by the shoulders, and should force one to sit or lie on a red-hot iron couch or red-hot iron bed, luminous, glowing and fiery, or that one should enjoy the couch or bed, the, a gift of faith of the wealthy. Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the couch or bed, a gift of the wealthy, a gift of faith of the wealthy. Ill indeed were it to be forced to sit or lie on a red-hot iron couch or bed, Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean, etc., that a strong man should seize him by the head or by the shoulders and should force him to sit or lie on a red-hot iron couch or bed. And why? On account of this he may suffer death or ill amounting to death. 
but not for that reason would he be reborn in hell. But when a wicked man enjoys a couch or bed, a gift of faith of the wealthy, he does so to his harm and ill for many a day, for after death he is reborn in hell. What think you, monks, which of the two were better, that a strong man should seize one, feet upmost and head down, and should hurl one into a red-hot copper cauldron, luminous, glowing and fiery, and there, being boiled, to be whirled now up, now down, now crossways, like bubbling scum, or that one should enjoy the lodging, a gift of faith, of wealthy nobles, wealthy Brahmins, or wealthy yeomen. Surely, Lord, it were better to enjoy the lodging, a gift of faith, of wealthy nobles, wealthy Brahmins, or wealthy yeomen. Ill indeed, Lord, that a strong man should seize one, feet upmost, and head down, and should hurl one into a red-hot copper cauldron, luminous, glowing, and fiery, where being boiled, one would be whirled now up, now down, now crossways like bubbling scum. Monks, I declare unto you, I protest unto you, it were better for a wicked man of evil nature, unclean, and of suspicious conduct, full of secret actions, no recluse though vowed thereto, unchaste, though vowed to chastity, rotten to the core, lustful and vile, to be seized, feet upmost and head down, by a strong man, and hurled into a red-hot copper cauldron, luminous, glowing and fiery, where being boiled, he would be whirled, now up, now down, now crossways, like bubbling scum. And why? On account of this he may suffer death, or ill amounting to death, but not for that reason, on the breaking up of the body after death, would he arise in the untoward way, the ill way, the abyss, hell. But when a wicked man of evil nature, unclean and of suspicious conduct, lustful and vile, enjoys the lodging, a gift of faith, of wealthy nobles, wealthy Brahmins, or wealthy yeomen. He does so to his harm and ill for many a day, for on the breaking up of the body after death, he is reborn in hell. Wherefore, monks, train yourselves thus wise, of whomsoever we enjoy the requisites, that is to say, the robe, arms, lodging, and medicines, and to them such services will become very fruitful very profitable, and unto us also this going forth will not become a barren thing, but fruitful with issue. Train yourselves in this way, monks. Monks, for one who can see his own will to strive earnestly is well worth while. For one who can see another's will to strive earnestly is well worth while. For one who can see the will both of self and others to strive earnestly is well worth while. Thus spoke the exalted one. Now while this exposition was being delivered, from the mouths of as many as sixty monks, hot blood gushed forth. Sixty more gave up the training and returned to the lower life, saying, Hard is the task of the exalted one. Very hard is the task of the exalted one. But the hearts of sixty others became without attachment and freed from the asavas. That's the end of the sutta. It's quite an interesting and uh, quite a strong sutta. The <clears throat> Here the Buddha is giving a warning uh, that a fraud or evil monk uh, will end up in hell. And um, the descriptions uh, of the different kinds of suffering uh, that the Buddha described uh, actually... Um, in some other suttas, uh, we can see uh, these are the types of uh, suffering uh, that a person undergoes uh, when a person falls into hell. Uh, and um, this kind of suffering in hell uh, is for a long time. And that's why the Buddha said, uh, it is better uh, to suffer these uh, various kinds of suffering uh, now than to uh, be a fraud, a rotten monk, uh, and accept all the offerings of lay devotees, eh? uh, because after that, that person, if he were to 
uh, be that kind of a evil monk, uh, then he would have to suffer all these types of suffering many, many times uh, and for a long time in hell. So it is uh, better for a monk to disrobe uh, if he cannot live the holy life purely. Uh, uh, that is why, like in Thailand, it seems uh, there's a saying that uh, there are many people with yellow robes uh, in hell. Um, and also you find uh, towards the end, uh, many of the monks couldn't accept this uh, teaching uh, by the Buddha, and some of them uh, blood came forth from their mouth, and some disrobed and returned to the lower life. But those who uh, realized uh, the, the teaching, uh, they were freed of the asavas and became arahans. Uh. Some, some, uh, some monks uh, who are not real monks, uh, they don't like suttas like this, uh, because it is very, how do you say it, um, it's, um, it's uh, right on, on, spot on, as they say. And uh, uh, this is, the words used are quite strong. Mm-hmm.